So you've bought an archetype frame and want to build an analog setup. Here's everything you should have. SpeedyB F405 mini stack, four VCI motors or something equivalent, SpeedyB ELRS receiver, Zeus nano video transmitter, an Ant nano camera, an optional right hand polarized antenna, and of course the archetype frame. Before touching the electronics, we're gonna start with the frame, specifically the base of it. Then we can move to mounting the electronics later. Opening the box, first you'll see the aluminium parts. Set this aside and you'll see three boxes. The first will have all the hardware needed for the build, like screws and bolts. These will be labelled and we'll reference these throughout this build video. The next box will have all the 3D printed parts and the next will have your carbon fibre plates. And this is where we're going to start the build. So first take your bottom plate, this will be the one that has this little notch here. Take four 10mm countersunk screws and put them in the armholes. Make sure this recessed area here is facing down so the screws fit flush. You'll have four arms in the pack, two with logos and two without. Grab the one that points forward with the logos facing down. With the notch on the bottom plate facing away from you, place the arm onto the screws. Do the same for the next one, but this time it should be facing back. Now find the keystone and place it between these arms. Slide on the left arms and make sure they're facing the correct direction. The keystone is designed to brace the arms, so if it's a tight fit, just wiggle it in till it all fits flat. Okay, now grab the middle plate, again with the recessed area facing down. Place it so that the threads line up with the screws here. Now you should be able to tighten the screws and they will sandwich the arms to keep everything secure. Grab four more M3 10mm screws and place them into these countersunk areas on the bottom. This is just to keep everything a bit more secure in flight. Now we're going to add the standoffs. These are the green aluminium rods here. You'll notice that there's four short ones and two long ones. The short ones go on the upper bottom plate and the long ones on the lower. Using more M3 10mm screws, secure all of these standoffs. Next, grab the two front plates in the box and they will be positioned like this. You'll need to use four M3 5mm screws to attach these plates. Now there's going to be four 30mm M2 screws. These are to hold the electronics, so place them into the holes that form this little square in the middle. You're going to get M2 bolts in the pack. I recommend using these to screw these bolts solid into the frame. This is optional, but I recommend doing it for sharper flying. With the base of the drone built, let's get into the electronics. If you have the SpeedyB F405 Mini, it should look like this. Grab the ESC board. This is the board that controls the power to the motors and from the battery. You can recognize it because it always has six pads on either side for the motors and two big pads on the back for the battery. Now in the SpeedyB pack, you should have this cable. This connects the two boards. So we're gonna plug it into the ESC board now and then mount it onto the frame with the plug facing down. Now we're gonna start by soldering the power leads on. This connects the battery to the boards. In the archetype pack, we've included two leads perfectly cut to the right length for this build. All you have to do is strip both of them, about five mil on both sides to expose the cable. To do this, I like to snip around the insulation and then pull it, that way you're not going to accidentally cut any wire. Now, let's start on our first solder. To solder two parts together, you need to do what's called tinning. This is melting solder onto each connection first, so they join together properly. So, set the temperature of your iron to 400 degrees Celsius. On the power pads, we're going to add a blob of solder. You want to try to melt the solder with the pad and not the iron directly. That being said, you could briefly touch it to get everything flowing. Do this to both sides, and then you want to tin the cable using using the same method. And now to join these parts together, just place the cable on top of the pad and push down till both solders melt and combine. Now you just want to repeat this with both cables and make sure that the cables are facing downwards because you want them to run along the top of the carbon plate. And the last thing we're going to do is attach a capacitor. You'll find this in the SpeedyB pack. Now note that on one side it's labeled as negative. So we're going to simply cut it a bit shorter and solder this to the pads as well by just pushing it into the pads with the iron. The negative on the negative and the other side on the positive. Okay, now let's attach the integrated battery port. First, place it upside down. You want to tin these terminals, being very generous with the solder. It's worth noting that you don't want to heat it up too much because you don't want these terminals to move. Now tin the power cables again and attach the battery port in the same method by pushing the iron down into the joint. It's important to make sure that the curved side of the battery port goes to the negative side of the board and the flat side goes to the positive. 
Now grab the 3D printed antenna holder and place the mount inside. The curved side should line up, if not, your ESC might be upside down or you've soldered the wrong polarity on the battery pads. So if this is the case, double check these things. Use the 2.5 8mm screws, screw the port in and slide it over the standoffs. The battery cable should now sit pretty flat on the carbon plate. If that's all good, then let's move on to the motors. The first thing we're going to do is attach the landing gear to each arm, and you'll notice that all the motor holes will line up with this. Remove the motors from the packaging, and use four M2 8mm socket screws to attach them. Now to help organise the motor wires and to protect them during flight, we've included wire covers. So thread the motor wires through these, and use the adhesive to attach them to the frame. Now every motor has three wires and a corresponding pad on the ESC. So in preparation, let's add a blob to every motor wire pad. Okay, and now now we get to the tricky bit. Take the innermost wire on the motor and we're going to wrap it around the screw and gummies and cut it shorter to make sure there's no loose wire. Strip the end, tin it and attach it by pushing the iron down on the joint. The next wire is going to be the same process but cut slightly longer so it sits behind the first one and then follow the same process with the third motor wire. At the end it should look like this and if you replicate this with every motor you'll end up with a clean layout like this. Moving on to the next step, grab the second circuit board from the Speedy B pack. This is the fly controller and does all the computing of flying. When mounting this, make sure this arrow is facing up and forward. Now there's three things we're going to wire into this. The video transmitter, the receiver to receive controls, and the camera. But before we get started with that, let me catch up to speed with what you're looking at. The first thing to note is there are multiple pads that have voltages like 5 volts or 9 volts. You also have what are called UARTs. And a UART is a set of two pads, one for receiving information and one for transmitting information. Think of these like USB ports. Now let's start with connecting the video transmitter. Now it's going to look like this and we're going to add a blob to the RX, the video, 5V and the ground pads. Join the wires that come in the pack accordingly. Try to follow the same colors I'm using so it's easier to understand where the wires are going to be going to. These wires don't have to travel very far to get to the fly controller, so cut them so they're about 60 mil long. We'll need to strip the cable again, but with these smaller cables, you can just use a nail to grab the insulation and then pull it off. On the flight controller, add a blob to the VTX, 5V, ground and T1. I've added a wiring diagram to the left here, but otherwise the yellow wire goes to the VTX, red to the 5V, black to the ground and blue to the T1. Now to mount the VTX, you should have M2 14mm screws with bolts in the archetype pack. And there's also going to be two sets of spacers. We're going to use the two longer ones. Put these through the holes at the rear, mount the VTX like this this and use the bolts to secure it down. With the VTX done, we're going to move to the receiver. In the pack you'll find the board itself, an antenna, wires and a bit of heat shrink. Add a blob to all the pads on the board and add the black wire to ground, red to 5V, green to TX and yellow to RX. On the flight controller, add a blob to the ground, 5V, R2 and T2. Again the wiring diagram is here but black to ground red to 5V, green to RX, and yellow to TX. Okay, and now the last component, the camera. Grab the camera and this bracket from the pack and join them. There's going to be two cables in the pack, so plug these into the correct ports. Now in the archetype box, you'll have two sets of mounting pads, green ones and black ones. For the analog setup, we're going to use the black ones, so push these in on both sides and screw the camera in using the included screws that come with the camera. These wires can also be cut down to 40mm, don't worry about about the plugs, we can't use these anyway. On the flight controller, add blobs to 5V, ground, cam and CC. The wiring is on the left here and make sure to double check this because the colours are a little inconsistent with the camera. So on the first set of cables, red wire goes to 5V, the black wire next to the red wire goes to ground and the yellow wire goes to cam. On the second set of cables, the black wire is going to CC and the green wire is going to ground. You can put this ground cable on the other ground pad as well. Okay, now all the wiring is done. For the final touches, let's connect antennas. So first, take that heat shrink and slide it over the receiver but Pull it down to the cables. Take the T antenna from the receiver pack and thread it through the rear of the drone in between the battery cables. The antenna will sit nicely in the holder like this. 
take the port from this antenna, plug it into the receiver, and now pull over the heat shrink. Next, we're going to connect the video antenna. This is where you can add that optional antenna we talked about before, but for this build, we're just going to use the one that comes with the Zeus VTX. So thread this through the middle hole, and also thread this through in between the power cables. From here, just plug it into your VTX, and now let's do a quick test to make sure everything is working smoothly. Before we plug the battery in, I just want you to look over the connections and make sure none of them have spilled and are connected or anything. Double check the capacitor's negative side is going to the negative terminal on the board and check that all antennas are secure. You never want to turn on a drone without the antennas plugged in because you're likely to wreck the boards. Now you can see I'm using a smoke stopper when I plug the battery in and this will cut the power if there is a short, that way nothing gets damaged. Now let the power through and if it does this, there's a short somewhere. In this case, it was just a loose wire connecting two pads. And once this was fixed, it made the sound it's supposed to make, which is... For diagnosing purposes, it's worth knowing that the first set of beeps is the ESC, and the second is the fly controller. So if you don't hear them all, it could be a communication issue between them, likely this cable here. All right, now let's pair the drone with the remote. When you first turn it on, the receiver should go straight into pairing mode. If not, plug and unplug the battery three times like this. It will now start blinking like this to indicate it is now in pairing mode. On the remote, hit menu, express LRS, and scroll down to bind. It will take a few seconds and then it should bind. On the home screen, it will now have these bars to indicate it's paired and the receiver will now be solid red. Now, just a few final things. In the archetype pack, there'll be some self-locking M2 nuts Use these on the stack screws. Take a match and bring it close to the receiver with the heat shrink on to keep it all together. And now put the top plate on and just secure it with one screw for now. Now the build is done, we need to configure it in Betaflight now. So plug it in using the fly controller and near the connect button you should see update firmware. Now the first thing we're going to do is update to the latest version. So in this section, hit auto detect on the board and select the latest version. Make sure all of these settings are the same and we're going to remove a few of these options since we don't need them. Hit load firmware online and once it downloads, hit flash firmware. It's going to prompt you to create a backup and make sure to do this just in case the update fails. It will take about two minutes, then we'll be ready to start adjusting the settings. Once it's complete, hit connect. It might give you a warning, but just ignore this. Now, what we're going to do is work our way down these settings on the left here. So first, make sure your drone is responding to the physical movements, then place it on a flat surface and calibrate the accelerometer. If it's not responding correctly, it means you didn't fit on the flight controller on straight, but if you need to, you can change this here. Next, go to ports. Now, this is very specific to your board and how you wire it all together, but if you followed this tutorial, do the following. Serial RX is the receiver. We soldered this to RX2 and TX2, so it's going to be UART2. So make sure this is selected. Next, let's tell it which one is the video transmitter. We used RX1 and TX1, so that's going to be UART1. So change this to RC Tramp. Hit save and reboot. Now in configuration, set the craft name and pilot name. And under receiver, you want to make sure the drone is responding correctly to the inputs. So throttle up moves the throttle and check your roll and pitch. If it's not responding correctly, play around with the channel mapping. This changes what stick inputs are seen as. I've put a few other common channel maps on screen here. So if your one's not working, try one of these. All right, next let's look at the modes. This is where you assign functions to certain switches on the remote. I'm going to show you what I used to fly, but feel free to assign them how you like. Now, first let's start with arming. This is spinning the motors to start flying. And the first thing you want to do is hit add range. Then you want to flick this button. You can see it moves this little notch as you click the button. And this section inside the bracket is when it's on. So move this so the notch falls on on when you press the button down. Next is angle or self leveling. Hit add range and put that on this three level rocker and set it to the middle. Set horizon on the same switch and set it to all the way up. If neither of these flight modes are on, your default is going to be acro or manual mode. And this doesn't have to be assigned. The next function is flip over after crash. This will make the motor spin in the opposite direction. And I put this on the second rocker with it all the way up. All right, next we need to configure the motors. For this, plug your battery in, making sure props aren't on. Click motor direction reversed and then hit reorder motors. What you're going to do here is just tell Betaflight which motors are spinning when prompted. Once you're done with this, click motor direction, then select individual. What you're going to do here is spin each motor and if it's spinning in the correct direction as outlined in this diagram, then you can leave it. If not, click reverse. Sometimes it's hard to tell which way the motor 
is spinning. So I like to use a prop without the adapter so it sits loosely on the motor. And then when you spin the motor, you can see it a little bit easier. And finally, we're going to set up a simple OSD, which is the text you'll see on the screen when you fly. So go to OSD, select battery voltage and average cell voltage and position them around this location. Hit save and if you have beta FPV goggles, press and hold the scan button till it finds the channel that the drone is on. Finally, screw down the top plate with M3 10mm screws for the standoffs and two M3 5mm screws for the front plates. And now you should be ready to fly.